Well, good evening, good people. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hope everybody's having a great, great day. I am... Um, I've been working in my workshop and getting some doors made for cabinets at the red brick house that are going to be fantastic doing some cutting boards doing some uh, plaques and stuff and i do have some news if you are a tailgate member um you've got a new shot glass that's going to be coming to you in the next couple of weeks and mike is getting all of the uh shot glass holders like these out to you guys as well uh it's just cost a lot with the shipping and getting all the stuff done and uh we're getting that stuff out as soon as possible but rest assured if you're a tailgate member <clears throat> you will be getting a squeeze ball as well as your four one not the two we have he, these are some mini ones these are some smaller paddle ones but be that as it may we will get that stuff to you guys and we appreciate your patience um what I'm going to say here is going to probably piss off some people um, and definitely contradict what a lot of what you get from the talking heads. You know, Cam Newton kind of sparked a lot of controversy yesterday talking about guys that were game managers and uh, like, you know, Brock Purdy and Dak Prescott and uh, Jared Golf, you know, and so on. And they start talking about guys that were game changers, that there's only like four or five of these guys. And Dan Orlowski, which I don't understand why Dan Orlowski is considered to be this expert out there. You know, the ESPN got rid of guys like Steve Young, at least a guy who's in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Um who has won a Super Bowl and so on. You know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not crazy about Steve Young, but I will take what he has to say a lot more than a guy who lost the game because he ran out of the back of the end zone. A guy who was never any good as a pro, but some reason guys like him, um, people like Joy Taylor, who of course never played football, are deemed experts in the game and stuff, and they get a narrative and they seem to can't they they can't seem to let go of it. And there's this whole perception, and I'll be honest with you, I have always been this one that said Josh Allen is overrated. He is not as good as everybody thinks he is. As much as we killed Dak Prescott last year for the turnovers, nobody really talks about Josh Allen since 2018 has more turnovers than anybody else. We talked about Carson Wentz being a turnover machine, but Josh Allen is actually worse. <sighs> yeah, they don't do this. Now, we've got people who, of course, would say, you know, GMs to a man, they would take Josh Allen over Dak Prescott. Okay, that's fine. Then, you know, some of these GMs, are they winning Super Bowls? I'm just asking for a friend. Because just because you're a GM doesn't mean you are the be-all, end-all and understand how to build a team. Because we've seen generationally teams that just suck ass and they've had GMs. So we're we looking and saying he knows what he's doing when he sucks? No. So let me ask you this. I'm going to give you two quarterback comparisons right here okay if i said to you you have a guy who over the last five weeks last five weeks three wins two losses okay he's got eight tds three interceptions okay averaging only 171 yards a game but has a 100 and a half rating Okay, yardage isn't great, but eight TDs and three interceptions, three and two record. That's a winning record, right? And 100 uh, QBR, okay, that's good. That's good. I mean, that's Dak Prescott's career is 99. And this guy's got 100 in the last five games. Now, let's take player number B. B player has seven TDs one less than the other guy, and has five interceptions and a couple of fumbles to go with it. So we'll, we'll just deal with the interceptions. Seven TDs, five interceptions. Does have more yards per game, 256. Has a two and three record and an 80 and three quarter rating. So player A clearly has a 20 point rating higher has one more TD and two less interceptions. 
one guy is a bum, the other guy is considered a generational game changer. Player A, who has the eight TDs and three interceptions, is Tommy DeVito, who is three and five, although he's only had four starts. He ended up coming in against the Raiders in relief of Daniel Jones. So that wasn't a start. But as a starter, he's three and one. But for comparison's sake, I use five games because that's what I use with Josh Allen. So Josh Allen, over the course of the last five games, two wins, and the wins are against the Jets, against the Jets, and against the Chiefs in a controversial call. He lost to the Bengals, which are not considered a good team right now, lost to the Broncos, which were the worst team in football before, and lost to the Eagles in overtime. So as people go through and say, oh my God, we have to face Josh Allen. We got to play Josh Allen. Josh Allen's generational talent. And I'm going to kind of say, you need to pump the brakes a little bit here because what he's doing right now is ass. Dak Prescott in the last six games is what, 23 touchdowns and two interceptions? You've got Dak Prescott going three to one to Josh Allen's TDs in the last five or six games. Dak Prescott, like zero to two, or sorry, zero to one in turnovers. And so when we look at this and say, you know, well, they got Josh Allen. I'm sorry, guys. You can take Josh Allen if you want. I'll take Dak Prescott every day. Tommy DeVito. And let me be clear because I can't remember exactly how bad we beat Tommy DeVito. Understand, that's Tommy DeVito's stats after getting his clock clean 49 to 17 by us. Okay? By, uh, and and for, for, for reference, let, let me put in here for this too for you guys. Okay? Tommy DeVito. Tommy DeVito. That streak. They lost 30 to 6. 30 to 6 against the Raiders. Lost 49 17 against us. They did beat the Commanders 31 19. They beat the Patriots 10 to 7. And they beat the Packers 24 22. Not exactly offensive outputs. That's just to give you a perception, perceptive perception of how bad Josh Allen has been. And as always, I appreciate you guys for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Blue Sports Report. Peace out.